conservative new media viewers and Jeremy Lin fans around the world. What's going on? We're here to discuss Houston's 106 to 96 victory tonight on the road against the Brooklyn Nets in New York City. Woo! Another huge win. This is another gigantic win. Now, Brooklyn played without Joe Johnson, their starting shooting guard, and Darren Williams, the point guard, has two bad ankles that he's been getting cortisone shots for. Cortisone is an anti-inflammatory. So when you're when you're just you're inflamed or the tendons or the ligaments or, or muscles, that helps to reduce that inflammation. So Darren Williams isn't at full strength, but Brooklyn is still a very good team and they're big. They're huge uh, on their front line. They're very big and they have a lot of depth with size. So this was not an easy game for Houston and Houston had to play tonight's game without the new guys from the trade. Um, As I mentioned in the comments video number two that I did earlier today, those guys weren't able to play tonight because the people that Houston traded away to Sacramento haven't done their physicals yet. And before a trade can be completed, everybody involved in the trade has to have physicals done, which is just you have to get checked by team doctors to make sure you're okay and that there aren't any secret injuries or something that the team that traded for you didn't know about. So until that happens, nobody involved in the trades can play. So the new guys for Houston were in New York tonight, but they weren't allowed to play, which meant that Houston was playing again with like whatever, eight or nine guys. And starting Carlos Delfino at power forward against a very big and good rebounding team. So uh, this was a tough matchup. And Brooklyn came into this game having won four games in a row. Um, This is a type of victory just like the Oklahoma City victory last game in game number 56. This is the type of win that's going to help Houston get a playoff spot. As I've been telling you guys, I'm very much convinced Houston's going to make the playoffs now as long as they stay healthy. I looked at their schedule. I looked at them compared with the Lakers and Golden State and Utah. Those are teams they're fighting with, and they're in very good position to make the playoffs now. I'm very excited about it. And if you're winning games like this and winning the Oklahoma City game, you're going to make the playoffs. Uh, I still do think the Lakers have a real chance of getting in the playoffs, but if they do, I don't think they're going to get Houston spot. I think they might get Utah spot and possibly Golden State spot. Uh, Houston was in control of a lot of this game, but Brooklyn made some real serious runs in the third quarter and the fourth quarter. Houston was able to hold on and then the Rockets surged at the end of the game to get a 10-point victory. So that was great. Carlos Delfino was huge in this game. He had some real clutch baskets down the stretch, and he was great. I mean, he had, he was the best player for Houston tonight, even better than James Harden. Um, so, I, you know, he's not a power forward. But what Houston's doing right now this, they're playing a lot like the Miami Heat plays. Miami starts Chris Bosh at center, even though he's not a center. He's a power forward. And sometimes they'll start Shane Battier at power forward. That's kind of like starting Carlos Delfino at power forward. Battier might be a little bit taller than Delfino, but it's pretty much the same thing. And the strategy of that is, you know what? We're not going to try to go big. We're going to try to go with skilled players who can shoot, and we'll see if you can beat us. And it worked for Houston against the Thunder, and it worked again tonight. So great. That's tremendous. It works a lot for the Miami Heat as well. So whatever works. Uh, Houston's bench outplayed Brooklyn's bench, and that's very significant for a young team on the road. The rule of thumb is that bench guys play better at home than they do on the road. But the bench was big today. Greg Smith, Demo, 
Donatus Matayunas, Patrick Beverly, and James Anderson. They all played well in this game, and they were needed, and it was just great to see. During this game, and, and I'll, I'll mention this as I go through the quarter by quarter, there were times where I was like, man, this team, Houston, can be like scary good. Really, really good. And again, they're missing guys right now. I mean, they, this team, if they stay healthy, they get a couple more pieces, which, you know, Daryl Moore, the general manager, is looking to get. They can be really good within like a, two years. I mean, serious contender good. And it's just great to see. I told you guys, I'm thrilled with the trades. I know they were looking at still getting Josh Smith, and that didn't happen, but they're going to make a move or moves this summer. And they have a lot of talent on their team now, a lot of talent and a lot of versatility in what they can do. They can go small. They can go bigger. They can do different things. And it just you could see it tonight. It was great. Um, Jeremy had a tough game, but the, the team picked him up. So again, this is why you have a bench. And he's going to have these games. He's still young. He's still learning. He's still in his first full season as a starter in an offense that's not made for him. So there's still going to be these games. I mean, we had Linsanity 2.0 in the last game, and tonight was a tougher game, and it's going to happen. But, again, it doesn't matter as long as the team wins. If the team wins, everything's cool. Uh, just to just to say this again, I did make a second comments video earlier today. So if you haven't checked that out, you can go check it out. And it's long. It's about an hour and five minutes or so. I will put a link in the video description of this video so you can go and check it out. Maybe after you watch this, this game video, if you haven't got a chance to check it out. This, uh, it was fun. A lot of comments and... Um, I wanted to get it done yesterday. I just didn't have a chance, but I did get it done earlier today. So uh, you can check that out, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Okay, let's turn to Jeremy. Jeremy had nine points, two rebounds, six assists. He played 36 minutes, shot four of 11 from the field, was zero of two on three-point shots, was one of two from the free throw line, no steals, no block shots, five turnovers, three personal fouls. I don't know what his plus minus was because it was missing from the stat sheet. And his efficiency number was four, which isn't that good. The higher the number, the better it is for efficiency. Jeremy was outplayed by C.J. Watson and old nemesis Darren Williams. But like I said, it doesn't matter. I don't care. There's no revenge games things here because Houston won. If you win, everything's great. And that's what happened tonight. So, uh, good. Brooklyn, their defensive strategy on Jeremy tonight was to let him shoot jump shots. And I think it threw Jeremy off a little bit. In other words, they were daring him to shoot. What that means is, what it looks like is you'll get the ball out on the perimeter and your guy will literally back away from you and go towards the paint, go towards the lane, that that uh, that rectangle where you shoot the free throws from. And that's what was happening tonight. Or if the guy doesn't literally walk away from you backwards, if you catch the ball on the perimeter, nobody will come out to challenge your shot. And so Jeremy had a lot of that tonight. That's the kind of defenses that they were playing on him earlier in the year. And, um, you know, in other words, we, yeah, we want to see you hit shots. We want to see you hit three-pointers. But that hasn't been happening to him recently because he's hitting three-pointers and he's hitting outside shots. But that's what Brooklyn did tonight. And Jeremy was a little hesitant. Like he started thinking about it too much instead of just shooting. And I think that might have thrown him off, and that might have been why his uh, he struggled from the field. Uh, but he'll adjust to that. I mean, it's just I think it's just something he hasn't seen in a while. So sometimes it can kind of um, set your back a little bit 
and I think part of that might have been what happened tonight. Uh, as I said, there's still going to be games like this. He's still going to have games where it's going to look like this. And um, that's normal. As I said, he's a young point guard. He's still learning. Sometimes there are going to be matchups that are difficult for him. And uh, so you're still going to get this. And, but it's not a big it's not a big deal, and it's not unexpected. This is going to happen the same way that Lin Sandy 2.0 is going to happen like the last game. And his challenge is to continue to work to become consistent so that there's not the up and down, that you get more steady. And that's going to come with time. And as he continues to work on various skills, keep working on shooting, keep working on your shots, etc. Uh, the haters can come back out tonight. You will see them again tonight. Uh, now they can crawl back under the ro- out of the rock. They can crawl out of the darkness after the Oklahoma City game. Uh, I'm sure they'll be out on clutch fans and everywhere else, which will be, oh, yeah, we won, but Jeremy wasn't good. Oh, he's, he's overrated, blah, 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 blah. And that's just part of the deal, and that's just the way it is, you know. You guys, people that are on the internet a lot, you know, you see those little gifs or the little pictures of haters going to hate. That's the way it is. Jeremy's always going to have haters. It doesn't matter. He's doing fine. He'll be fine. Um, Yeah, the main issues for Jeremy tonight were he didn't shoot well and he had too many turnovers. Uh, But he still played a pretty good game. His numbers didn't look good, but... He still played a, a pretty solid game tonight. I mean, he had some blown assist, and um, you know, Brooklyn played good defense, but he he managed the team well. I thought he had good poise. His confidence was pretty good, except for when he was getting the wide open shots that they were giving him. But uh, he looked good. Again, he's he's getting more and more confident, and uh, it's very good to see. The one thing Jeremy did really well in this game was he passed the ball great. Um, And I'll talk about a couple of those passes. He had some really nice passes in this game, so that was good to see. Okay, let's go to quarter-by-quarter highlights here. Early in the first quarter, Jeremy had a nice pass to Carlos Delfino for a three-pointer from about 20 degrees right of the top of the arc. In the middle of the first quarter, Jeremy hit a jump shot off the dribble uh, on the top of the key. The top of the key is where the free throw line is. Above the free throw line, there's a semicircle. And uh, right at the top of that semicircle is called the top of the key. So if you someone says a jump shot from the top of the key, that's what they're talking about. And the... If you hit a jump shot from the free throw line, then they'll say the free throw line, free throw line jump shot. So that's the difference is that little semi-circle that you see painted there. Um, Middle of the first, Jeremy hit a fall away jump shot from about 30 degrees on the degrees to the right of center. The shot clock was running down. It was a really nice shot. Jeremy was just forced to take the shot and he hit it. I believe, over Darren Williams. Okay, Jeremy came out of the game with four minutes and nine seconds left in the first quarter, and the Brooklyn Nets were winning at that time, 23-19. to Patrick Beverly came in for him, and Beverly finished out the quarter. Going to the second quarter, Jeremy started the second quarter, and he was playing as the shooting guard with Patrick Beverly playing at the point guard, and James Harden was sitting at that time after playing the the entire first quarter. Now, the lineup at this time was Beverly, Jeremy Lin, Chandler Parsons playing uh, small forward, Demo was playing power forward, and Omer Ashik was playing center. This is where I really started thinking, man, Houston has versatility. Because the thing is, if you have Demo and Omer on the court at the same time, that's two seven-footers. And Demo's agile. 
I mean, it's like, wow. You start seeing the potential of what this team can do. And, and you understand why Marcus Morris got traded. Again, the Marcus Morris trade, in my opinion, and I've read this as well, was because they wanted to have playing time for Demo. It was, and they didn't get anything from Marcus Morris. They got like a draft pick. So basically what you're saying is, yeah, I mean, we don't need anything. We just want time for Demo to play. And Demo looked great. Demo, I think, had nine points in this game, and he came in and, man, it's like I said, this guy has a lot of skill. He did a move against um, Chris Williams. It's called an up and under move. An up and under move is where you're – it's a post-up move. You are – your back is to the basket. You turn around and you fake like you're going to shoot. You fake like you're going to shoot. And the guy comes up on you. And so that's the up part of the move, up. You go up like you're going to shoot. The guy comes up on you and then you step under him because you, you're allowed to move one of your, your feet on post-up moves. You, you can't move both feet, or that's a travel, but you can move one foot. And it has to be the same foot. You can't move one foot and then the other foot. So it has to be uh, the same foot. So you turn around, you fake like you're going to shoot, the guy comes up on you, and you step under him and and take a shot. And that's what Demo did, and it was awesome. It was a really, really nice move. As I said, for a 22-year-old guy at his size, to be able to do that move that well at his age, that is impressive. That is really, really impressive. As I said, this guy has an enormous amount of skill, and he's just going to get better and better. I mean, he played well tonight. Not perfect, but very well. I mean... It's as I said. I mean, Houston is man. It's they're going to be good. Re- even if they didn't get anybody else, they're going to be really good. But they're going to get other guys. That again, they're going to try to get Dwight Howard. You know, they may try to get Josh Smith too. So I mean, they're this team's going to be a serious contender soon. Okay, early in the second quarter as well. After Demo's move, Jeremy took, dribbled to uh, to his left and beat Darren Williams off the dribble from the right-hand side of the floor. So he got past Darren Williams, and then he went to the right side of the basket and hit a nice little scoop shot uh, underneath, I guess, Brooke Lopez. So, again, that's the type of move that Jeremy needs to be able to make in order to score on drives. You have to beat your first defender and then you have to beat the second defender. And that's what he did on that. Now, a lot of times you don't, I I mean, it's good if you can beat your own man off the dribble, but if you can't beat your own man off the dribble, that's why guys will have people set picks for them, you know, like pick and roll. You set picks because then you have a free driving leg. You can, you don't, you know, your defender is out of the play. And then the other, the man who set the pick, his defender has to pick you up. And that's usually a big guy. So then you have an advantage because you're a little guy and he's a big guy. So um, that's, I mean, that's a big part of the reason why the pick and roll exists and why it's so effective as a basic basketball play. Um, as I said, it's best if you're able to beat your own man off the dribble because then you can get your own shot anytime you want. That's the optimum thing as a, uh, as a guard particularly. Um, soon after that play by Jeremy, Demo had a really nice steal, and he's got quick hands. 
quick hands. As I said, not only has he got skill and offensive moves, he's he's got fast hands. He had a couple of nice little steals in this game. And they said, I mean, the guy's got a tremendous amount of ability. Middle of the second quarter, Jeremy had one of the just tremendous passes. He was on the left-hand side of the, the court. And Demo was going uh, down the middle of the lane. And Jeremy threw a right-handed bounce pass that ended up in Demo's hands for a dunk. I actually believe that the pass went off of a Nets player's foot. Like he actually hit the guy in the foot, but it still was such a good pass. It still ended up in Demo's hands for the dunk. That came at 6.55 left in the second quarter. And it put Jeremy, uh, excuse me, it put Houston up 44 to 37. It was just a tremendous pass. I'm sure you'll see it on the highlights. So uh, that was great. Right after that, Demo drew a charge. So offense, steals, charges. Like I said, this guy is going to be a big time player in the NBA. And I just can't wait. Hopefully he can just stay healthy. And uh, if he's going to be good. Middle of the second quarter, Jeremy had a another great pass. It was a pick and roll play with Demo, and what happened was Demo set the pick and then just you know took off right toward the rim. Jeremy dribbled to the left of the pick, and he just he knew exactly where Demo was. And did a no look pass right to his um, right to his right. Demo's rolling to the hoop, and I think it was just a little layup or a dunk that came with five twenty left in this in the half. So you can see Jeremy already has great chemistry with Demo in terms of on the court. He knows where Demo is. He knows where Demo's um, likes the ball. This type of thing, and that's really good to see. I wrote a note at this point in the game saying this team is becoming a machine, and it is. Jeremy, and we talked about this earlier in the year, Jeremy is starting to learn. He's really learned where guys on the team like the the passes. I, I used to say this, he needs to... You know, get a little better with passing the ball to Omer or Omer can dunk in him. You know, the team doesn't have chemistry. If you're a point guard, you have to learn where to pass guys the ball, where they want the passes, when you can pass it to them, when you can't pass it to them. And Jeremy's learning all of that. That's why his passes are getting better and better. And his confidence is getting more and more. And he's throwing more no looks and stuff because now he's starting to know what the tendencies of the teammates are. And as I said, the more that he learns that, the better this offense is going to run. It's going to look like a machine. It's because it's going to be so boom, 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 precise. As I said, Jeremy, even if he never gets back to Linsanity's scoring levels, which I'm sure he can get to when he, you know, he shoots better and he gets a little bit better on his drives, He's an awesome passer. He's a traditional point guard. What that means is guys that look to pass more than they look to shoot. Guys like John Stockton. Guys like Steve Nash. That's a traditional point guard. Now you have point guards that aren't like that, that look to score more. And that's like Russell Westbrook. Um... Isaiah Thomas from not not the current Isaiah Thomas on Sacramento, but Isaiah Thomas from the Detroit Pistons in the 80s and 90s. Those are more scoring type of point guards. And but but the traditional role for the point guard is run the offense and pass the ball. And you can shoot, but that's not the first option. You want other guys to shoot. And that's what Jeremy's doing more of. As we've talked about a number of times, Jeremy came out of college as a combination guard, meaning point guard and shooting guard. And now he's playing more as a real point guard. And he's doing great. He's doing great. He clearly has that ability. So 
even if he never was super scorer again, he's always going to be able to do this type of, of pure point guard stuff because his court vision and passing is so good. Um, okay. Late in the second quarter, Jeremy had another amazing pass. He threw the ball. He was on the left-hand side of the court again. Greg Smith was had uh, it might have been a pick and roll. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think it was. Greg Smith just ran right down the middle of the lane, and Jeremy threw the ball on a bounce pass through the legs of Brooke Lopez for Greg Smith for just huge dunk. Just another one. Just just another amazing play. That came with 344 left in the second quarter, and that made the score 54 to 44 for Houston. And then again, late in the second quarter, Jeremy, left hand side of the court, drove to the rim. He made Brooke Lopez come up and, and, and stop him because if you don't stop him, he's going for a layup. Brooke Lopez came up. Jeremy, perfect pass to Greg Smith for another super dunk. Now, that kind of play that Jeremy did right there, that is what is known as drive, draw, and dish. You drive to the basket. You draw the second defender. You've beaten your man or you're in transition and you know there's nobody ahead of you. Brooke Lopez is guarding Greg Smith, but the first rule of defense is you have to stop the ball. So Brooke Lopez has to go and guard Jeremy. He dr- Jeremy draws Brooke Lopez to him, and then you dish the ball to the open guy. You dish the ball to the to the man whose defender just came to guard you instead of the other guy. And so drive, drive the ball towards the basket. Draw, draw the defender, dish, dish to the guy whose defender just came to guard you. And that's how it works. And that was a perfect play. Dunk. Great. So, I said, Jeremy had troubles in this game, particularly in the second half. But in the second quarter, he was rolling, particularly passing the ball. And this is what it's about. As I said, it's one of the reasons why he's so special because he can score, but he can do that too really, really well. Uh, and I made a note then that, you know, Jeremy was playing with poise, swag, and savvy. And he was. He was playing great. I said his numbers weren't good in this game, but he still played pretty well, even though he had moments where he's struggling. I also made a note then where Jeremy's starting to find his identity as a player and as a player for the Rockets, which is what I was talking about, more of a point guard than a shooting guard. With the Knicks... He was more of a shooting guard, even though he'd have alley oops to you know Chandler and these guys for dunks. But the Knicks needed him to score more, particularly when Carmelo and Amari were out. The Rockets don't need that as much. They need him to pass more and run the offense, and that's what he's doing. He can still score, and his scoring will go up as he continues to refine his three-point shot and as he gets better at the little scoop shots, floaters, and all that stuff, his scoring will go back up again. He's not going to score 12 points. I'm sure he'll score more than that next year. Um, but he is playing more of a pure point guard role, and he's very good at it. And he's better than James Harden at it. And I, look, I love James Harden, you guys know, but Jeremy has more pure point guard skills than, than James Harden does. And that's fine because James Harden is a better shooting guard than Jeremy is. So it it works out perfectly. Okay, Jeremy started the third quarter. He, in the middle of the third quarter, he drew a charge against Reggie Evans on, on a fast break, which was very important because at that point in the game, Brooklyn was making a run. This game was right about tied at that point. And Houston had kind of given up. They were up by like eight at the half. So, uh, that helped Houston start getting it back a little bit momentum. Also in the middle of the third, Jeremy had a great pass to Carlos Delfino for a right corner three-pointer. That actually broke a tie 
at 68 apiece and gave Houston a three-point lead with five minutes left in the third. And like I said, this was a real... Uh, a real struggle at this point in the game for Houston. Brooklyn was coming on, and Houston was just trying to hang in there. And uh, those couple plays there by Jeremy were very important for Houston to kind of maintain where they were at in the in the contest. Uh, late in the third, Jeremy was substituted out for Patrick Beverly. Um, I said Patrick played great in this game. He he played great. He hit some big shots, and as I told you guys, I miss Tony Douglas, but I think Patrick Beverly is better than Tony Douglas. Patrick Beverly just has a little bit more confidence in his game. He's a little quicker. I think he shoots a little bit better, and I I really like him. I really, really like him, and uh, he played well tonight. Uh, as I said, Jeremy had a tough second half, so he, he had a tough time in the third quarter. He had a tough time in the fourth quarter as well. Jeremy started the fourth quarter on the bench, and the reason why is because the unit that was with Patrick Beverly, well, I think it was James Anderson, Greg Smith, a couple of the other bench, they were playing great. They actually pushed the lead early in the fourth quarter to 15 points, 90 to 75. So it's like... You know, you you got to go with what works. And I give Coach McHale credit because he stayed with those guys, and they were playing awesome. And Patrick Beverly hit a three. James Anderson hit a three. And it was, it was great. Now, soon after that point in the game, the 90-75 to 75 lead for Houston early in the fourth, then New Jersey started coming – excuse me, Brooklyn started coming back, and it was kind of like, okay, here we go again. They, they're slowly crawling back into the game. McHale brought the starters back in, and uh, Jeremy came back in with about 7 minutes and 25 seconds left in the game. And it was 92 to 84 Houston. Um, again, I mean, he was struggling a little bit there. He he, There was one sequence, I believe it was in the middle of the quarter, uh, C.J. Watson hit a shot on him, and then Jeremy tried to go back at him on the other end, and he got a turnover on a charging call. And that's where he has to be careful of that. We've, I've talked about this in other games where he can get a little too keyed up and, and, and try to do things that he's not able to do yet, where he needs a little bit more skill in terms of scoring and stuff, and he'll try to force things. And he did it on that play. And the thing that was good was that on the next play, he just gave the ball up to James Harden. Like, yeah, I kind of messed up on another play. And that's what you have to do. Look, I mean, you know, you have to give it a shot. I mean, he tried to do what he could do. It didn't work. And then, you know, he, he gave the ball to Harden on the next play, and that was good. That's what you should do when you do something like that and it doesn't work. Um, late in the fourth, Jeremy hit a – Free throw line jump shot off the dribble. That was an important shot. He was going from, he started on the right-hand side of the court, dribbled towards the free throw line, hit a nice little shot off the dribble. And then finally, late in the fourth, when the game was was over at this point, uh, Jeremy was fouled intentionally, and he hit one out of two free throws uh, near the end of the game. Okay, like I said, the overall summary for Jeremy was it was a tough night for him, but he had a great second quarter passing the ball. And again, the bench picked him up, and that's why you have a bench. That's why you have good players. And I am more confident than ever in Houston's bench. Uh, it's it's getting better. And again, we didn't even have the new guys from Sacramento tonight. So it's, it's, uh, it's very encouraging with how – things are coming together for the team this was a huge win for Houston I said this was a huge win they're getting closer to the playoffs with these types of victories and and that is just great to see and it's happening quick so I told you guys Houston wasn't supposed to compete for the playoffs this year I mean respected analyst were predicting Houston was only going to win 23 games this year. Well, they've already won 31. 
and there's still whatever 25 games left they're they're doing great they're ahead of schedule and now it looks like they're really gonna make the playoffs and so it is great it is definitely great okay it is right now 11 28 p.m here on the east coast of the united states on friday february 22nd which means that it is 12 28 p.m on saturday february 23rd in taipei taiwan let's do some comments and questions third rail yep lynn does fall down a lot but he's getting better at it he's not getting Earlier in the year, he was like a pinball. I mean, he was just falling all over the place, getting hacked. He's much better at that now. And that's one thing that guards have to learn how to do is not take a lot of punishment. Uh, Dwayne Wade, man, I mean, you know, early in his career, he just got beaten up constantly. But he got better at it. Jeremy's getting better at it. There are some guys that take hits like him, but... He's getting better at it, and thankfully he hasn't really gotten any major injuries except for the meniscus, and I I believe the meniscus was probably because he played so many minutes and he wasn't used to doing that. I mean, he basically came from the bench to like 40 minutes a night, and uh, so, you know, as much as he's gotten hit, it hasn't, got, it hasn't hurt him yet, so I think he is adjusting to that. And I think he'll keep getting better at that, particularly as his shooting improves. And you don't need to drive as much. You're right. Dwight Howard is a drama queen. There's no question about that. But he's also extremely talented. And I think he would do well in Houston. I do. Because it's it's a big market, but it's not a huge market like L.A. or New York. Those markets might be too big for Dwight in terms of his mentality but I think he'd fit well in Houston. And, um, look, I'd love to get him, even with all his drama, because he's a heck of a player. Um, Jeremy is a, a draw for players. Yes, he is a draw. It's like what happened for Shane Battier playing with Yao. And Shane Battier, I think, had like a shoe line or something in, in, in China. Why? Because of Yao. Guys know that. They know that. So, yeah, that's definitely a magnet effect for free agents and stuff because you get close with Jeremy Lin, you know, you're probably going to have some good opportunities in Asia. So that that will help Houston recruit people uh, for sure. Um, Don't worry about the timestamp stuff. Again, I will do timestamps. I still have to learn how to do it properly, but I'll do them after I do the videos. So... It won't, it won't slow down the, the production of the videos on the front end. They won't go up any slower. It's just more of what I'll do after they're already up. Uh, M, MB Dubaha, uh, you're asking about Rubio versus Jeremy. Um, it's a good question. Rubio is a prodigy, meaning that he's just somebody that was looked at as incredibly talented from a very early age. I mean, they were talking about Rubio. Rubio became a pro, a professional player in Spain when he was like 14. And that's incredible. Now, I don't care where you're, what country you're in. To become a professional basketball player at 14 is unreal. That's like a freshman or, or, or a sophomore in high school. And that's how good this guy was. So Rubio is a pure point guard. Now, I was talking about that with Jeremy. He doesn't look to shoot a lot or score a lot, but he's an incredible dribbler, amazing passer, has great hands on defense. And the, the, the worst thing for Rubio was he got the ACL injury. But he's, he's starting to regain his form. As I mentioned, Jeremy is more of a combination guard. And uh, Bake C34 pretty much had it right. Rubio's more like Rajon Rondo, and Jeremy's more like Steve Nash and Tony Parker, which is to say 
Jeremy's a better scorer than Rick than than Ricky Rubio. Ricky Rubio, he needs to work on his shooting and he needs to work on his layups because he doesn't do that that much because he doesn't care. He's looking to pass to people. Rubio is definitely a better passer than Jeremy. Even Jeremy's an amazing passer. But Rubio, I mean, he throws some of the best lob passes I've ever seen. And so they're different players. I think they both have high ceilings. If I had to give a, an edge to who has a t- higher ceiling, I would give it to Rubio, even though he had the ACL injury, because, again, he's a proven player. He's been a pro for like seven years in Spain. Jeremy's just getting started. I, I think Jeremy's going to be a star, as I've said before. I know Rubio is going to be a star as long as he stays healthy. Rubio's just, again, he's a proven commodity. He's been looked at for a very long time. And, uh, look, I love watching both of them play. They're both great, and we'll see how it goes. Maybe they'll have a good little rivalry for years. I know they like each other, uh, and and uh, I saw, you know, when Minnesota played Houston the last time, I, I remember Rubio went up to Jeremy at the end of the game, and they were talking. So, uh, great. Um, as I said, Big C34, you're right. Uh, from you know, you're from Canada, I should you know point that out. I just mentioned different people and where they're from when it's not the USA. I, yeah, it was a good as uh, analysis of of how to talk about the two guys, and I, I'm I I agree with what you said. Wei Fang Hu, um, I'm glad that the long videos work out for you and your 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 hour long commute to work. That's cool. Uh, another commenter, Lynn Amos, has said pretty much the same thing. Like he's got an hour, an hour and a half commute to work, so he likes the long videos. So that's good. I'm glad that that works out. Minhee Cow, uh, I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, I know you told me about this before. I just don't remember exactly how to say it properly. So you can tell me if I get it wrong. It's a good idea. You know, if I can't watch videos from my own YouTube channel, then I can make another one and, and watch them from there. So that's true. That's a good. That's a good. Uh, that's a good thought. Melody Ting from Australia. Great to have you watching the videos and 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 commenting. Uh, yeah, Jeremy seems like a really good role model, and I'm glad that your friends told you about him. Uh, I'm I'm happy that you enjoy the videos, and I'm glad that I can help you learn more about the game. Welcome to uh, welcome to the the Jalen Party Train. Uh, okay, the next game is tomorrow, Saturday, February 23rd here in the USA, which is early Sunday, February 24th in Asia and in Australia. Um, it is against the Washington Wizards in Washington, D.C., and they will also be playing on a back-to-back. They played tonight, and they beat the Denver Nuggets. Washington is not a good team, but... They've beaten some good teams this year, so and they're better than what they were because John Wall, their point guard, is back. Um, they're 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 playing better. Houston should win, but again, you never know when Washington's going to play a good game the way that they did tonight. So hopefully, we'll win that game. If you don't win that game, then it's like it takes away tonight's win. So definitely want to win that game and keep moving on this road trip. Okay, your comments below. Thumbs up, thumbs down on this video. We have full information in the video description below the video player for game highlights, game stories, box store, excuse me, box score of the game, and also information so you can come and join the Conservative New Media Facebook group, which has over 2,000 members and growing all the time. I am Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. Thanks for watching Conservative New Media. We strive to be the number one Jeremy Lin YouTube fan channel. Great win tonight. Very happy. Really pleased with how these guys are playing. I These last two games, wasn't sure they were going to win. I didn't think they were going to win, and they won both of them. So they're really in a good spot to make the playoffs, and onwards and upwards. 
And uh, I hope everybody's having a good day, a good night, wherever you are around the world when you watch this video. And we will talk to you again soon. Certainly, we will talk to you again tomorrow after Houston plays the Washington Wizards. Till then, take care and hope everybody's good.